So imagine that you are starting a new makerspace at your school and you have to choose what to buy first, a 3D printer or a couch. Well, I'm not going to answer this question for you, but as I'm giving my talk, I want you to think about how you would answer this for your school. When most of us think about makerspaces, I think we probably picture something like this, equipment, um, 3D printers, laser cutters, maybe sewing machines, but I don't actually think that this is the most important part of the space. I think that the most important part is actually something that we probably don't think about, which is the people and the culture in the space. Given the right culture, you will have awesome partnerships, great ideas, people coming together across disciplines, but without the right culture, without that recipe, you probably just have an empty room full of equipment, which I don't think is what we want. So why do we need makerspaces? Well, these places give us a chance to troubleshoot, to solve problems creatively, to pick up awesome maker skills, and also to get access to emerging technologies that we might not have access to otherwise. So you might think, this is awesome. How can I do this at my school? Or maybe you have a makerspace at your school, but you think it could be better. I'm going to give you a few best practices so that you can get the most out of makerspaces at your campus. A lot of times when we think about starting a makerspace, we think about buying equipment. But don't do that just yet. If you have equipment, that's fine. Don't buy any more. But a lot of times, spaces tool up, and then they realize that they aren't actually serving the needs of their users. So how do you avoid this pitfall? Well, ask your users. This is a design thinking event that we had at Boise State where we invited students to come help us define the future of makerspaces on campus. And these sorts of events are great for harnessing your student population to tell you what they need. We also really want to make sure that people feel like they belong in the space and like they are makers. So these are profiles of users that we put up on the wall so that when people come in, they see themselves or someone like them represented in the space and they feel like they belong. A great way to help build maker identity is to ask people when they come into the space, what's the last thing you made? And maybe it's a sandwich, that's fine. That still counts, that's still making. And having that maker identity really makes people feel like they can come there and make stuff. Clubs are a great way to harness the existing resources of your campus to help build visibility and your space. So this club, the Creative Technologies Association, has used student organization grants to bring more equipment into the space. Partnering with classes is also a great way to raise visibility. We have over 30 classes at Boise State that use our Maker Lab. This is a material science class, and they printed structures for their final project. It's a great way to let students know that the space exists. Safety should be an integral part of your culture, and it's awesome if you can have some ways that people can start making that don't involve safety training, and then they can work up to the more advanced stuff later. But this is not the only important type of safety. You should also have the safety to fail and to learn from your mistakes. And makerspaces are a great place to do this, and you can develop resilience that applies to school, to work, and to life in general. So we all know the design thinking process, right? So think of your space as a prototype and iterate it constantly to make sure that you are listening to the needs of your users and serving the needs of your user community right now. So with these tips, I'd like you to think back to my question that I asked at the beginning. Equipment versus culture, 3D printer versus couch. How would you choose? Well, I'm gonna turn that question on its head. Why do you have to choose? Why not let your users help you choose for you? So I'm gonna leave you with this question. How might we reimagine the, our approach to developing makerspaces on campus so that we can each build the makerspace that works best for our university? Thank you. Woo!